ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇಧಸೆ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಯ ಪತಯೇ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಲಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕುಶನಾಭಾಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ವಿಶ್ವಾಮಿತ್ರ ಟು ರಾಮ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಂಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಾಯು had got a sexual desire towards them and he forced them to get married to himself so that they will turn to immortal however those daughters of kushanaba rejected the proposal of vayu and they insulted him and they told him that only their father kushanaba will choose their spouse and they won't choose the spouse on their own seeing this insult wind god deformed all of them to become dwarf and king kushanaba is very much worried at the fate of his daughters when the hundred princes were thus questioned by the king their father they placed their heads at his feet and answered the wind god who pervades all has entered the evil path and desired us to forsake virtuous conduct if we told him we were not free to choose our way of life since our father was still living and that he should consult you if he wished to wed us but that sinful god disregarding our request has twisted and deformed our bodies in this manner the great king hearing the complaint of the hundred virgins said to them you have acted nobly by teasing forbearance towards the deity it is meet that generous minded should exercise forbearance you have added to the honor of my dynasty forbearance is the chief ornament of both men and women you have achieved something great few are capable of such forbearance O virgins, forbearance is charity, forbearance is truth, forbearance is sacrifice. A man's true glory is forbearance, forbearance is dharma, the world is established in forbearance. Having spoken thus, the princes were comfort- comforted and the king dismissed them. then the monarch mighty like a god summoned his ministers and consulted them regarding the alliance of his daughters to a suitable families at the proper time and place now a great muni named chuli from full of glory or chuli full of glory derived from prolonged celibacy and highly virtuous was engaged in sacred austerities for the purpose of spiritual liberation at the same time at that place the virgin daughter of the nymph urmila called somada began to minister to the muni he attended on the great sage for a long time with undeviating faith and devotion our guru tuli was pleased with her she said to her i am pleased with you what desire of yours shall i fulfill perceiving the muni to be highly pleased that sweet voice nymph quite acquainted with part of conversation made answer to him o king of kings i desire to bear a son resplendent with divine power a worshipper of god and devoted to dharma i have no husband nor do i wish to be the wife of any as i am a brahmacharini therefore by virtue of your yoga grant me a son produced by the power of your heart the divine sage tuli was pleased to hear these words and granted her a son named brahmadatta by the power of his mind brahmadatta became king of kampilya and was as prosperous as indra in heaven 
King Kusanabha resolved to give his daughters in marriage to King Brahmadatta. Kushanabha requested King Brahmadatta to visit him and joyfully gave him his daughters in marriage. O Rama, King Brahmadatta, who was equal to Indra in glory, wedded the princess one by one by taking their hands in his. Through the touch of his hand, the princes were freed from their deformity and restored to their former beauty. When King Kushanabha beheld his daughters released from their disfigurement and restored to their former beauty, Kushanabha was filled with joy. Thus did the king Kushanabha give his daughters in marriage to King Brahmadatta and then commanded their preceptors to accompany them to the court of his son-in-law. Somada, the mother of Brahmadatta, the nymph, she was delighted with the union of her son to the damsels and receiving them with great affection commanded the virtuous king Kushanabha. Thus ended chapter 33 of Balakanda in Ramayana. Here in the story, if you observe it, certain things may not be acceptable for the today's world. However, in those good old days, those customs were never considered as contradictory because here Somada, being herself a nymph, says that she would re she wished to remain Brahmacharini and do not want to get wedded to anybody. But then Rishi allowed her to have a son, Brahmadatta, through the power of his mind. What technologies they were using, whether he, without having a sexual contact with her, how he could be able to offer her a son, which is possible in the today's technology, we do not know how exactly he offered her the son in those good old days. And then there is a saying that once the marriage is done, everything will become all right. Here Kushanabha does the same thing. As a king Brahmadatta, he respected and obeyed Kushanabha and married his deformed daughters who all turned out to be having the celestial beauty once the marriage was done. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puravasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidyadhanancha Dehime Bye.